So I sold a 68 put on Snap for October 22nd expiry, collected a dollar when Snap was trading at around 75 before the market closed. But then this happened after hours when earnings was announced. Right now it's showing that it dropped 21% after hours, but it actually had a low of around 52. So if I click on the chart here and look up the one day chart, one minute, you could see this beautiful candlestick right in the middle here. Look at that drop. Uh, let's look at the lowest candlestick here. Let's zoom in. So <laughs> I'm, I'm scared to find out. So the last one here, you can see the low. If you look up here, the low is 52.48. So Snapchat actually dropped from 75 to 52.48 after hours that's almost 30 percent 52.48 divided by 75 yeah that's more than 30 percent a 30 percent drop so now my 68 put is completely breached for tomorrow i might even get a sign early on these on that put and end up with shares at a 68 strike hopefully not but definitely i'm gonna have to roll it tomorrow i'm gonna probably have to go to if i keep the same strike and i can go to november or december keep the same strike and roll for a credit if I'm happy with that strike, if I'm comfortable holding that put and if I believe the stock will eventually come back up above 68. If I don't, then I have to roll the strike lower. I'll try to roll it lower for a credit. If not, I might have to add a contract so that I can roll to a lower strike. So pro like maybe sell, convert this 68 put to two contracts at a 60 put, for example, maybe all the way to December. If I can do it for a credit. One thing I definitely want to do if Snapchat reaches or opens at around 55 or even 52, like we saw after hours, uh, I definitely want to sell a new put out of the money put, maybe 45 or even 40 for November or December. Definitely an, a good opportunity to sell an out of the money put, uh, in my opinion. That's definitely something I want to do. So why did it fall so much? So let's look let's look at the headlines here. Snap warns Apple change, changes supply chain way on ads. So let's look at this article here. So it seems like Apple's uh, ad blocking uh, feature is, is the reason. Yeah, Apple's data collection rules and global supply chain issues are weighing on advertising spending. But for a stock to drop 30%, okay, anyways, that's all I need to know. What's funny is Facebook also dropped all the way down to 319 after hours right now it's at 326. And then Twitter also dropped, I think, 6 or 7%. It was at 60 almost or 61. Now it's at 62.3. So it seems like it affected Twitter and Facebook. So if you look at the one year chart, there is this section here where it just jumped from 62 to, to 77. So at worst, I thought maybe it would drop back down to 62, but dropping back to 52. That was ridiculous. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. I'm definitely gonna have to roll it and I'm definitely gonna add a contract, but I don't know which strike I'll end up rolling into. And if I do get assigned early, if I find myself with shares, then I'm just gonna reverse it. So I'll sell the shares and then sell the put that I had the intention rolling to, to begin with. So I'm not gonna worry if I'm assigned shares, I'm just gonna sell the shares and then sell the new put that I wanted to sell anyways. The problem is with question, I would have wasted a $25 assignment fee. That's the only that's the only risk or loss in this case. I don't plan on holding the shares and selling covered calls because that will take up cash for my account. I'd rather just keep rolling the put. It will give me the same credit anyways if I'm selling the same strike. Whether I'm selling the, the 60 put or the 60 call, I'm going to get the same premium if I'm rolling the put or if I'm selling a covered call. Now, a similar situation happened to me with earnings on pins last time. So I sold a put at 65 and the stock dropped all the way down to 55, I believe, after earnings. And I've been rolling it since at the same strike. And uh, it's actually it actually came back up to this week. It came back up to here. Let's look at the five day chart came back up to 63, even 66. It had a high of 66 this week. So it's looking good. I've been rolling it for almost three months now. Uh, it closed today at 61. After hours, it's at 59. So it looks like uh, Snapchat's earnings affected the uh, Pinterest as well. 
but it's getting closer to 65 so hopefully the same thing will will happen with uh, snapchat now i thought it would be fun to see what the uh, the gang at tasty tasty trade uh, did so you've got nick batista here uh looks like he's the only one that is actually making a profit a small profit but at least a profit so he looks like he sold a call an 80 call he sold a 78 call and then he bought the 75 call so it looks like he did a um a call debit spread or credit spread so he sold the well he bought so yeah so he actually did a call a debit spread so he bought the 75 call and then sold the 80 call so that gives him a five point wide call debit spread so that means he was bullish so that means if the stock goes up he makes money if the stock goes above 80 but he also sold the 78 call so he collected a small credit so that 78 call actually gives him risk to the upside but he would be collecting a a, a five point so let's say the stock is above 80 let's say the stock is at 80 what's going to happen is his debit spread is going to be worth five dollars he already collected 47 cents but he's going to have to buy back the 78 call for two dollars so he already collected 47 cents he's going to collect another five dollars from his debit spread so 0. 0.47 plus five but minus the two dollars for buying back the 78 call so he'd make a profit of 347 what if the what if snap went to 85 so if snap went to 85 he still has his 47 cent that he collected his call debit spread is going to give him five dollars but he's going to have to buy back the 78 call for about seven dollars so in this case he loses money so he's got a point there's a certain there's a certain range where he's profitable at but beyond that he starts losing money so that range is about 83.47 i believe so let's try that out so if snaps at 83.47 his debit spread is still worth five dollars he still has that 47 cents that he collected opening the trade he's got that five dollars from the debit spread but now his 78 call is worth uh five dollars and 47 so it gets wiped out so his break even is around um is is exactly his break even is exactly 78 plus 5.47 so his break even is 83.47 so he would have lost money if if this if snap went above 83.47 but in this case he actually makes money because snap just completely dropped and his his max profit is the 47 cent that he collected on this trade so ends up being a winner so let's look at mike butler so he did an iron condor all right collected eight dollars and 30 cents it it's a 14 point wide iron uh, 14 point wide yeah 88 minus 74 then 74 minus 60 so we have 14 point wide it's actually an iron butterfly because the short strikes are the same so 74 74 so, so we did an iron butterfly collected eight dollars and 30 cents it's 14 point wide so it's, it's a defined risk trade so his max loss is actually 14 minus 8.3 so he's got a max loss of 5.7 which will happen tomorrow because his his long strike on the put side is 60 and and um, snap is below 60 but who knows maybe it opens a little bit higher tomorrow comes back up gets bought maybe comes back up and actually maybe he loses a bit less and maybe he's got a strategy to roll it he could probably try and roll it by increasing the contract maybe or maybe turning it into a naked put as well but definitely that eight dollar credit that he received is going to help him in rolling the trade because he can he can roll for a debit he's got eight dollars that he collected he can try to roll for a debit and save the trade and he can save it by either maybe doing an extra contract or maybe even keeping the same contract and just paying to roll and saving the trade uh, so he's i think he's in a better position because he, he collected such a big credit all right so this guy what did he do he sold a 60 he sold two naked puts at a 60 strike he went all the way to january okay um and then he did he sold an 85 call and bought the 75 call so he he's got a debit spread he's, he's got a call debit spread so he makes money if the stock goes above 85 he's, he, he makes ten dollars but that's for january so 
if snap is above 85 by january he makes ten dollars so that's good that part of the trade is good and then this part here he's got two naked puts at a 60 strike for january as well and all that he did for 20 cents so he doesn't have to do anything tomorrow actually because his expiry is january 92 days i don't understand why but whatever but he's, he's actually just gonna watch it now so the call side is not gonna do anything uh, he probably maybe he can sell no he can't sell anything no so he's just gonna watch probably can doesn't have to do anything because his call his call side is not profitable there's nothing to do the put side is is going to be showing a loss on paper but he doesn't have to take action because he still has time and his strike is pretty low it's a 60 strike so really he doesn't have to do anything he's just gonna watch and uh, as snap goes up then his 60 put becomes profitable but i think it has a long way before being profitable because it did drop a lot um but then his call debit spread he has to wait for snap to be above 85 for him to win on this trade i'm just thinking if he sold the 85 call and then it completely dropped what if he takes profit on the 85 call but then he'll have to buy he'll have to spend money to buy back the 85 call yeah i guess he could do that he could he could take okay he can take profit on the 85 call so he can buy it back because it's going to be worth very little not very little but it's going to be worth much less than what he sold it for so he can buy it back close it and then by doing that if ever snapchat goes up he's got unlimited profit on the upside because he's he's gonna have he's gonna be left with the 75 long call nothing to nothing to uh, to cap his profit if he keeps the 85 short call open it'll cap his profit to uh, to ten dollars basically that this 10 point debit spread has a max selling price of ten dollars but if he gets rid of the 85 call tomorrow then he's left with the 75 and if snap goes to 90 then he'll make a 15 dollar He'll be able to sell this call option for fifteen dollars instead of just ten dollars if he had kept the eighty-five call. Because the eighty-five seventy-five is a debit spread, ten point wide. It'll cap his upside. So maybe that's something he could do. He could probably just sell the eighty-five. Call. He can buy back, so he can close it by buying it back because he initially sold it. Only I guess if it's like maybe eighty percent profitable. Now because it still has ninety-two days, I don't know if it's gonna be. Um, I don't know if the premiums are going to drop by that much but given that the stock dropped more than 20 percent i think he can buy it back for 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 more than 50 percent profit i think we'll see all right liz and jenny what did they do a jade lizard like always so they sold a an 80 call and bought the 81 call so that's a call credit spread so that's a bearish trade so they'll make money on that portion of the trade so they the whole trade they open for 99 cent credit um, sadly they won't make a profit on the whole trade because they've got the 67 put so they're gonna have to buy back the 67 put or roll it and if let's say let's say snap closes tomorrow at 60 then they're gonna have to buy it back for seven for seven dollars but they only collected a dollar so they're not gonna be profitable on this trade but definitely the call spread did help them make a bit a bit of credit probably this definitely not this one dollar credit but i don't even i don't see why they sold that that one dollar point that one point wide call credit spread i mean what they collected what 20 cents from it i don't see the point of it but whatever so they sold a 67 put for two more so they, they probably got like 80 cents from this put and 20 cents from the call spread i don't see the point of it but anyways uh yeah, so they're just gonna have to roll it, and the call spread gave them an, gave them an extra twenty cents. Uh, yeah, this is similar to my sixty eight put that I'm gonna have to roll, but they're at sixty seven. So the call spread probably just allowed them to to choose a lower strike, but it's only uh, it's only one dollar lower. And anyway, so they're gonna have to roll it for sure if they want to roll it. Otherwise, they'll take the loss. But most likely, they'll just roll it into a naked put and maybe add a contract if they want to but yeah that's probably the what they're going to do okay so another so all right so next year we've got jim schultz <laughs> so he did 
it's funny as comment very simple straightforward strangle for snap earnings tonight not going to be that simple to manage anymore but at least he collected three dollars so that's good his call side is going to be completely profitable so his break even on the down on the put side is 64 so it's not bad actually because right now snap is around 58 59 maybe it'll open at 60 and start moving up so it's not a bad trade because his break even is 64 and same thing he'll just have to roll his put and he's all he's got november expiry so he's actually doesn't have doesn't even have to take action right away he could bring down his call side for more credit actually so he's probably going to do that he's probably going to bring down his call side get it closer to 60 to the 67 put maybe sell bring the 90 down to 75 call collect an extra credit making his break even on the put side even uh, wider so i don't know maybe collect 50 cents from the call or maybe a dollar so then his new break even will be 67 minus four dollars so it'll be 63 dollars and then he just waits till november sees what happens if if snap goes above 63 or 64 or even 67 then anywhere above 63 he's he his trade is profitable so that's actually not a bad position but i'm not sure if he's going to just close this entirely and take the profit on the call side or if he's just going to bring it lower to collect more credit but then the risk by bringing the call down but the call side lower is what if snap shoots up and then his call side gets breached but i think in this situation i i might be safe to, to bring the call side lower because i don't think i don't think snap is coming back up any in not that fast at least not until uh, not in 29 days so yeah not not a bad position actually yeah that's not bad i like it three dollars okay he went to november that's why he was able to collect three dollars i like to play for for earnings it's, i find it more fun to play the same week expiry so you can close the trade right away but obviously the advantage of playing the uh, the, the further expiry is that it's easier to manage and here we've got tom here selling 100 shares after hours i have no idea what he's doing here he wrote hedge so it looks like he looks like he sold the put like most people did and i guess to avoid further uh downside loss or further loss to the downside he he so he shorted shares so he sold 100 shares so if the stock continues to drop he's making money on this short shares but if the stock goes up he's losing money on the short shares but he'll be making money on the put that he sold but now it looks like he got in when the stock was at 56 but now it's at 59 so he's gonna in at the open if snap continues higher he's already losing money on the short shares and and his the put that he sold i'm not i don't know which put he sold i don't see it but the put that he sold will be losing less money because the stock is coming back up. But uh, yeah, so this is similar to selling that call like Jim did. Maybe if he, if he, if Jim, here, let me show you the other trade. So this is a little bit similar to if Jim brings down the call lower, but then the stock comes back up and he, and, and he gets whipsawed. So, but with Tom, he's already he already got whipsawed on the short shares because it's already above his his 56 uh, entry price so yeah uh, that was a fun earnings everyone um, most people lost on this but obviously there's ways to manage it so you don't have to confirm the loss but definitely uh, not an easy win uh, only only nick batista was able to come out come out with uh with a profit of 47 cents and if he did one contract that's 47 dollars all right just wanted to share my opinion and my trade on snap for earnings if you have any questions leave in the leave in the comment section below if, like always if you want to open an account with quest trade to sell options use my referral link below to get 50 dollars in free commissions thanks for watching